Good morning, Destination Church. How are we doing this morning? Amen. Amen. Well, you have the privilege of me today. We're giving Pastor Steve a little break today. But happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. I want to personally say happy Father's Day to my father, to my grandfather, to my stepfather, um, and to my spiritual father. And happy Father's Day to my husband uh, for being an amazing father and a great leader to our children. Amen. Amen. So each year we celebrate Father's Day. But I think that we just look at it as another day, like a holiday or a day that, you know, oh, it's Father's Day, it's Mother's Day, it's Easter, it's Christmas, right? But do we really know why we celebrate Father's Day? Like, do we really know why we celebrate fathers? So today I want to dig a little bit deeper into what is Father's Day? So most people say that it's a day that, you know, we say to our fathers, thank you for giving us life. Thank you. It's a day to say thank you and we appreciate you and we love you. Um, Some people don't acknowledge Father's Day because they didn't have a father or a father figure. Day to acknowledge your father, father's importance in your life, an opportunity to celebrate one of the most precious gifts ever, a perfect heavenly father, one of the best representations of a godly love through an earthly father. Another day to honor and remember my father for being a wonderful man in my life that I could always turn to for love, guidance, and support no matter what. It means celebrating that I have a dad and he's the best, best dad ever. So I'm not going to lie, you guys. Father's Day for me has not always been one of my favorite days. For me personally, I didn't have a good father figure growing up. Um, I didn't have a father figure that was constant in my life. Um, And I didn't know the love of a father, and I didn't have a very good example. So this brings me to the title of my message, which is Leading by Example. So when you ask people, what is a good example of of, of a father? You will probably get several different answers. Today, I'm going to give you a few characteristics Um, of what a father is, but it's going to be based off of what scripture says. Amen? So, fathers provide. So let's look at 1 Timothy 5.8, and it says, Anyone who does not provide for their relatives, especially for their own household, has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. So the father is to be a provider. Did you know that the word father means source? Just like we go to our Heavenly Father for a source, God has ordained that the father is to be the source of the household. Amen? So the father is to provide what? Food, shelter, clothes, the needs, right? The needs that children need. Um, they, they carry the family, uh, the fathers carry the load of the family unit. And some of you guys probably have heard, you know, the father is the breadwinner of the, of the family unit, right? We don't really say that anymore, but... It's been said a long time ago, back in the 20s, back in the 20s when I was a kid. (laughs) All right, so, but the thing is, is that, yes, the fathers are to provide, but it's not just financially. They need more than just physical needs met. They need spiritual and emotional nourishment as well. So it's the father's job to give them what they need to survive and to succeed. So not only do they provide what they need in a source of, like I said, food, clothing, shelter. But they also are to provide the nourishment in in a spiritual manner and an emotional manner. Amen. So, most importantly, they are to know, they are to show them how to know God, obey God, and to do his will. An earthly father represents God, our father, who is a faithful provider. Amen. Amen. So did you guys know that God has ordained the father to speak the identity into their children? That is is the father's role, you know, is that the father speaks their children's identity, their God-given identity to the, the children. Amen? I didn't know that. This is huge. This is a huge responsibility. It's a huge burden that I feel that the fathers, it's been placed on the fathers, but it's a mandate from God. It's a heavy responsibility. Um, if the father fails to do this, then you'll often see where the enemy comes in at an early age because, as you guys know, the enemy is always trying to come in, but they try to come in when the children are young. So, the, so if this fails to happen in a family unit, then what happens is the enemy will come in as children are young and they will, he'll sow a seed of a spirit of rejection because the children will then not know who they are in Christ when they begin to grow up. So that is a huge responsibility of a father. Amen? So, fathers are to protect. So let's look at Proverbs 14, 26. 
Confidence and strength flood the hearts of lovers of God who live in all of him, and their devotion provides their children with a place of shelter and security. So fathers are the protectors. They are to supply security and safety for their families. Fathers are to protect their kids from physical harm. Research shows that human trafficking is connected to fatherlessness. The majority of those in the porn industry have come from fatherless homes, and a lot of addictions stem out of, the, stem, stem out of this as well. Fathers should be praying for their children to deliver them from evil and lead them away from temptation. So the father has to step up and say, our family's not going to watch these kind of movies. Our family's not going to watch these shows. Our families are not going to visit these websites. We're going to, you know, the family is, you know, the husband is to, you know, no, you're not going to listen to this music. No, you're not going to go to these places. Um, they watch with the friends that they hang out with, the influences that they're around. So the father has a huge, huge responsibility. The father that says, the father that says, that, the, excuse me, the father that protects says, I love you too much. To not, to not shield you and protect you. Now, your kids might not like it. They may not like it. But that's what the father is supposed to do. So, you know, I don't know. Sometimes if you guys have seen, like, there have been, you know, fathers or even mothers that are trying to be, you know, their children's friends. And I'm not saying that, you know, you can't be your children's friends, but you have to be a parent first. You have to father them. You have to show them the example. And I personally, personally believe that if you parent them when they're young, then when they grow up, then you can be that friend to them. You know, you can still call them out on their stuff because they're grown, but I do feel that that sets the foundation um, to then later become something different to your children. So... Notice that in the scripture that we just read, it says confidence and strength flood the hearts of lovers of God, meaning, fathers, that you will be confident and you'll have the strength of the Lord to lead your family. You know, if the father looks at God the father as the example, then what the scripture is saying is that the Lord is going to give the father the strength. He's going to give him what he needs to carry out what he needs for the family unit. Amen? Amen. So then fathers lead, right? Fathers lead. So let's look at Joshua 4, 24, 15. It says, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors serve beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorite, Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Amen. So fathers should be leading. Fathers are to lead their children and their families in the righteousness of God by being obedient to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Standing up, making the calls and saying, again, we're not going to go this way. We're going to go this way. Um, you know, despite what's going on around us. I mean, look around us. Look in the world that we live in right now. It, there's so much chaos. There's so many things that, you know, what they say is right, you know, in the eyes of the world. But what does God say? And so we need that father figure to show our children, like, this isn't the right way. This is the right way. Amen? So, fathers and husbands are to be the head of the household. This is how God has ordered it to be. Children need their fathers to show them how to behave. Um, have you guys ever heard the saying, do as I say, not as I do? I don't, have you guys ever heard that when you were growing up? I heard that a lot. Well, don't do, what I, don't do what I'm doing. Just do what I tell you to do and like it. Just be obedient. But that's so far from the truth, amen? amen? So children need a dad to show them the example of being a good father and even a good husband. You know, I think that fathers can even portray to children as they grow up, like how husbands treat their wives, like, you know, is the example, not only just for them to get a wife, but also how do they treat in relationships? You know, how are you to treat pers a person in a relationship? If the husband is not treating the wife with respect and the wife isn't treating the husband uh, with respect, if there's not that good example, then how are our children going to grow up? They're going to grow up and they're going to they're going to follow in the same footsteps. They're not going to know. Amen. So, fathers are to be a helper. So let's look at Colossians three twenty one, and it says, "Fathers, do not pro do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged." Amen. So Jesus said that the Father would send the helper in the form of, a holy, in the holy, of the Holy Spirit to assist us in our daily lives. And he does, right? 
So the Holy Spirit came down to assist us in our everyday lives. We can call on the Holy Spirit at any given moment and ask him to assist us in our everyday lives, in which we should, amen? So our earthly fathers should look at themselves as the helpers to their children on a daily basis. Fathers should look for ways to help their children get through each season of life to find uh, God's will and that they could be found faithful in God. Amen? Fathers teach. So let's look at Deuteronomy 6, 6, and 7. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you... When you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. And then we're going to look at Proverbs 29, 17. It says, discipline your children, and they will give you peace. They will bring you the delights of your desire. So the book of Proverbs is full of how fathers should teach their children. They are the disciplinary to the kids. The fathers should be teaching their children how to succeed in life and, and show them the ways of the Lord. They're to teach them to build on a solid ground so that when life gets heavy, that their foundation doesn't get cracked. Amen? So I don't know for you guys, like, if I correct my son, like, meltdown city, and he is mad at me for a little bit, okay? Like, for a little bit. Now, if my husband, Pastor Steve, corrects him, he's mad for a hot second, and after that, he acts like nothing ever happened. I mean, he can whip him in everything, and he'll just be like, oh, come here, Dad. But he's mad at me forever. I'm like, what is going on here? So, but, you know, I had to think about him. Like, that's what God ordained, right? God ordained the father to be the disciplinary. But I do want to point out that if your children only see you, only see the father as the disciplinary and not having the, the loving and, you know, building the character and showing them the example, then... That's not really, it's not really good. So if you need to work on that, let's work on it. Amen. <laughs> I, I swear it's going to get uplifting, y'all. I, 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 it is. It is. I don't want y'all in here to think that I'm just, you know, come down with fathers because fathers are needed. I'm just trying to lay the foundation. I don't want y'all to think that I'm just, you know. All right. So let me continue. Let me continue for Pastor Steve comes and takes the mic. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Um, okay, so when a father speaks into the ears of his children, he's also speaking into his great-great-grandchildren. Yeah. Amen? So that's very, very important. So our father needs to send the word to teach us so that our earthly father can do the same thing to his children. Amen? Yeah. So fathers love and they encourage. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians 2, 11 and 12. It says, for you know that we dealt with each of you as, father, as the father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to, be, to live lives worthy of God who calls you into his kingdom and glory. And then we're going to read Psalms 103, 13. And it says, a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Children need to feel loved and encouraged by their father. They need to know that no matter what mistakes they make, that dad's still going to love me. They need that unconditional love, not based off of what they do or, oh, if, if you know, you take the trash out, dad's going to love me. It's not, it's not based off of that. It's unconditional, just like the father gives us unconditional love. Amen? Children need that encouragement from dad to keep going, to keep pushing, to keep going up the hill when they want to quit. You know, the father, you know, I think is key is showing them endurance, you know, if the father endures and they can, they can, the children can see that, then what are they going to do? They're going to know. Because children, they pick up everything. Like, even when you think they're not listening, they're listening. They're watching. So, you know, as fathers, we have to be that good example so we can show them the way. And where do the fathers get it? They get it from their, our Heavenly Father. Amen. So this year, Pastor Steve wanted a Blackstone grill. So, what did we do? We went out and got him a Blackstone grill, because he deserves it. But we got it for him early, because, you know, he cooks in our house, you guys. So, for that cookout, for that cookout, y'all might want to show up, because he really can cook, okay? So, I was like, well, if I want to eat, I better get him this Blackstone. <laughs> so, we got him the Blackstone grill, okay? And then, 
Elijah keeps coming to me and says, Mom, 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 here, look, look, Mom, that we can get this for Dad for Father's Day. I'm like, um, we already got him a Father's Day. Give us on the back, back deck. And, and so, you know, it just, I'm, I'm saying this to you guys because the point is, is that, you know, I sit and I look and I see how my son interacts with um, Pastor Steve or how, how he ad- interacts with his dad. Um, and, you know, he looks up to him. He wants to be just like him. He cares about his dad to the point where, you know, we go to Walmart. He'll say, oh, mom, mom, can I please get this? Um, can I please get this for dad? Reese cups or something dumb like that, you know, something that he don't really need. But the point is, <laughs> the point is, is that he thinks about him. He is constantly thinking about him, you know, and he looks up to him. He values him. He values his opinion. He wants, he wants to know, like, dad, am I doing a good job? Uh, dad, look what I made, you know, and so those are the things that I look at when I, when I sit back and I reflect, um, you know, he's to the age now that he, he can go to work with them. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we ain't got to get a babysitter no more. He'll go to work. Hallelujah. Make that money, kid. <laughs> and he will, and he will. If any of you guys need something done and you're going to pay him, he will be there. I promise you he will. Right, buddy? No, but in all seriousness, he is to the age now where, you know, if Pastor Steve has a job to do because he does, you know, construction, so he'll he'll go and he'll do jobs. Um, Now that he's out of school, he'll go with him. And I'm like, oh, hallelujah. Yeah, go with your dad. What are you doing today? Oh, you're going with your dad? Hallelujah. But in all seriousness, (laughs) y'all, I had my time. Like, I'm like, yes, yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, let me move on. If y'all knew, if y'all knew, if everybody knew what, I mean, okay, let me just move on. Okay, so he goes with him to work a lot now. And the thing is, is that, you know, it can be frustrating. I'm sure Pastor Steve will come home and be like, oh, sometimes he'll come home. He'll be like, oh, yeah, he did good. He worked really great today. And then other days he'll be like, oh, my gosh. And I'll be like, honey, it's building character. (laughs) You know, but the thing is, is that, you know, he might be frustrated right now, but one day he's going to look back and he's going he's gonna to see the impact that he had on him. He's going to see the character that was built and he's going to see, you know, what he instilled in him. He's, gonna, he's showing him right now that, you know, we, we don't just sit in our house and get things, they don't just drop out the ceiling and, you know, he's showing them, hey, if we want something, we have to work for it. We have to go. We have to get our hands dirty sometime. You know, he's showing them that we have to provide you know, as a, as a husband, as a father. Um, and so, you know, I sit and I look at those things and like I said, yeah, he may be frustrated some days, but soon enough, he's going to see the fruit of it and the character shining through and the character that was built by him leading a, by a good example. Amen. So when I reflect on this, I can only think about how important it is to lead by example. As the head of the household, fathers are to be the head of the household, but you're also being watched even when you don't think so. Right. Kids listen. Kids don't listen to what you tell them to do. They watch what you do, and then they do what you do. Yeah. So if you don't believe me, start looking back at generations in your family, and you'll start seeing the generational curses that are passed down. Yeah. Amen? Whether it's, well, a curse is bad. But my thing is, like, you'll see whether or not it's something that was passed down that, you're, that the family member or the dad was doing, or it's something that was good. You're seeing the fruit of it, whether it's good fruit or bad fruit. Yeah. So let's start breaking any curses and start passing down the word of God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to look at some examples of fathers in the Bible and look how they excelled, how they excelled and how they failed. Adam, he was the first man living. He was the first father. He didn't have, he was made in, in God's image and he was God's first masterpiece. Amen. He didn't have blueprints or any other examples before him. So, you know, God created Adam. So, you know, he didn't, he didn't know. He didn't have a father other than, you know, Jesus, but an earthly father. He didn't have that. Um, so, you know, some of you guys in here may be, may be a first-time father or you're becoming a first-time father and you're thinking in your head like, oh, my gosh, I, I don't know if I'm going to be a good dad or um, I didn't have a good example, so I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to be a good dad. But let's be honest. None of us are good fathers. We're, none of us are perfect. Amen? Amen? Even if you mess up trying to be a good dad, it's okay. It's okay. Even Adam failed. He wasn't a perfect father. He brought a curse upon his children by walking in a disobedience to God. Amen? Let's look at um, Abraham. 
Abraham is known as the father of many nations. He was obedient and trusted what God said would come to pass. He was willing to sacrifice his son, and this shows us that the sacrifices that our fathers make every single day for their children and for their families. He showed us that our relationship with God is more important than anything else because Abraham loved his son, but he loved God more. So where did Abraham fall? Abraham lied. He lied about Sarah being his wife. And guess what happened? He even passed it down to his son. His son lied too, right? Let's look at Noah. Noah lived in a time where there was wickedness all around, but Noah was steadfast on God. We look at Noah, or we think about Noah, and all we think about is Noah built the ark. Noah built the ark. But Noah was a good example of being righteous when others were not. He didn't follow the world around him. He didn't follow what was going with all the wickedness around him. He stayed steadfast on God. And he found favor in the eyes of God to save his family from what was coming. So, where did Noah fail? What did Noah do when he, when he got off the boat? He sure did. He got drunk. Amen. I was like, man, he's probably seasick. He's like, I'm going to need me a drink. I'm going to need me a drink. So, I'm just saying. Joseph. Joseph was Jesus' earthly father. He was a man of integrity. He protected Mary when she was pregnant and when she was going to be giving birth to the ultimate gift. Joseph taught Jesus the trade of carpentry. So if you're sitting in here and you have children that are not your biological children, look at Joseph as an example. Joseph was not Jesus' biological father, but God ordained him to be his father. He showed his family how God can take you from the pit to the palace by walking in integrity because Joseph had integrity. I couldn't find anything bad about Joseph, sorry. If y'all, if y'all find something, email me because I want to know. What happened? Hallelujah. See? That's right. All right, let's look at Moses. Moses was chosen by God to give the law and to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Moses was a good example of being a spiritual father. You know, he had trying to lead all these people and they're murmuring and complaining and, you know, all that stuff. Have you ever, I mean, have you guys ever had a spiritual father? You know, you're trying to lean and glean from him, you know, and, oh, the, you know, teach me this. Or, you know, you're doing something for the first time and you go to him. You're trying to get, you know, all this, you know, okay, where, where do I need to correct this? Or what should I do better next time? You know, and sometimes we go murmuring, murmuring and complaining, you know. So God bless Moses because he had to deal with that a lot. All they did was murmur and complain. But Moses was a good example of a spiritual father. No matter the wilderness season you may be in, you can overcome and push through it. Even with extreme, overwhelming challenges that you may face, it can be achieved when you remain faithful to God. And this is what Moses taught the Israelites. This is what he, as a spiritual father, I believe, that Moses did. But where did Moses fail? What did, Moses, what, what did he do? Moses disobeyed God by striking the rock instead of speaking to it. And he had a consequence to pay because he didn't enter the promised land. Amen? Amen. So you see, the Bible's full of fathers. Those are just a few of them that I picked, guys, because we could be here all day. And I know y'all are probably hungry. Pastor Steve's making steaks on the grill. So I'm, you know, bless. on that new black stone grill. So you see, the Bible is full of fathers who were all different. They all had seasons of winning, and they had seasons of failing. Their circumstances were different, and so was the outcomes. Not one father is perfect. Fathers win some, and they lose some. I think that if our kids actually see that, you know, we're not perfect, and they see their dad fail, it teaches them. Like, it's okay. You know, now they have these baseball games and all the games they have now for kids. Like, everybody gets a trophy everybody gets a trophy. That's not how life is. I'm sorry, guys. It's not. So that is setting our kids up for failure that everyone wins. Like there is a winner and there is a loser. We win some and we lose some, right? Amen. So as you can see, if we go by what the world teaches us or we can go by what God, what God says, amen. So 
we don't get it right all the time. Fathers don't get it right all the time. And that's okay. And I think that is, I think it is important that our children see fathers fail. I do. I think it's important that they see them fail and then they see them get back up and keep on pushing and keep moving. They have to. Because if not, they're going to walk through life and they're going to think, you know, every time that I mess up, they're going to, the enemy's going to speak in their ear and they're not going to know who they are in Christ and they're going to, and they're going to, and they're going to believe the lies of the enemy, of the enemy. Amen? Amen. So it's important, fathers. So the reason why I wanted to bring up some fathers of the Bible and say, you know, this is where they excelled, but they also failed. You know, they had huge responsibilities and they did their job well, but they also failed. So I just want to encourage some fathers in here today that maybe they may think like, you know, hey, I messed up. I messed up today. You know, I messed up for my children. I wasn't there for my children. Or, you know, there was a situation that arose. Like, I don't know what the situation is, but I want to encourage somebody today that it's okay to fail. As long as you get back up and you keep fighting. Amen? Amen. So... The world puts so many demands and expectations on fathers. Fathers do so much for the family unit, yet they receive little to no acknowledgement for what they do. They are expected to be the strong one and hold everything together. And while God has ordained that for the father to do, they still need to be encouraged and uplifted. They get weary too. They get weary in well-doing. Amen? So not only do they have to go out and provide for the family unit, they have to be the teacher, the helper, the protector, the encourager, but they also have to uphold themselves with a good standing relationship with Christ so that they can hear from the Lord and they can pass that on and lead their family in the right godly manner. Amen? That's a lot. It's a huge responsibility. And these are just some things. Like, there's even more, like, that fathers, you know, do. And, you know, it's when you, when you sit down and you dig into, you know, Father's Day, it, it's a lot, you know, um, we should have a lot more respect for our fathers, you know, the Bible says honor your father and your mother, and, you know, we should do that, so men and fathers will also, I've noticed this, they will also hold in how they feel because they do not want the family to worry, is that healthy? Probably not, Probably not, but they will do it. They will sacrifice because they do not want their family to worry. Amen? So they have a huge mandate. Fathers, you have a huge mandate. Just remember this. If the enemy can take out the stronghold of the, uh, the, stronghold, the strong man of the house, then he can take the house down. This is why it's so important that fathers lead the family unit. The enemy wants nothing than to destroy the family unit. That's what he wants. He wants to destroy the family unit. He wants to steal the father's God-given identity so that they can't pass it down to generations to come. And just like I said, you know, fathers, when they speak to their children, they're speaking to their great-great-grandchildren. You know, right now, God might not be fighting you right now for what you're doing. He's fighting you for what is to come. He's fighting you for your future. He's fighting because, you know, we have a uh, start and we have an ending, you know. And so the enemy is coming to destroy what God wants you to to accomplish for what he's called you to do. Amen? So just remember that. Being a father is more than just providing for your family. It's not, about, it's not just about being present in your family's life. It's about being emotionally and spiritually present as well. A father can be in a home every single night and not be there. It's about getting on eye level with your children and entering into the world. It's speaking life and their God-given identity into them. It's about leading by example. So for some of us, Father's Day may be uncomfortable because we didn't have a father figure growing up. Some of us didn't have a good example growing up. But one thing that I've understood in, in my relationship with Christ and growing in my relationship with, with Christ is that sometimes our biological parents are broken. Sometimes they cannot give you what they never had. And that was a huge, huge revelation for me, for both of my parents. So if they never had it, how can they give you what they never had? Maybe they didn't have a relationship with God. They may still not have a relationship with God. So if this is your story this morning, I want you to know 
that you can't get back what was, but you can receive and fill the voids with the Father's love that's been there all along. And that's the ultimate Father, amen? amen. So let's read Isaiah 64, 7. Yet you, Lord, are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are the work of your hand. And then I want to read 1 John 3 and 1. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. We are children of God. The reason the world does not know us is that they don't know him. And then I want to read one more scripture, which is Psalm 68, 5. And it says that God is what? He's a father to the fatherless. Amen? So God is our heavenly father, and he's the father who doesn't have, he's, he's a father to those who don't have a father, like myself. You know, I grew up not, I grew up, I was adopted. Some of you guys know, may know my story. I'm not going to go into all of it. But when I grew up, I was adopted. I have my biological dad. I talk to him. I honor him still to this day. I just took him out for Father's Day. Um, but he wasn't there. He wasn't there for me. Um, and I'm not saying this to beat him down. But again, it goes back to where the revelation of God, what, where God gave me. He couldn't give me what he didn't have. So I had my grandfather who, my grandparents adopted us, so I had my grandfather. He was there. He was always there, but he wasn't a very good example. He still doesn't know the Lord. I had my stepfather who, he was, he was a better, when, we, when I was able to go there, like he was a good father figure to me, but again, he doesn't know the Lord. And, you know, I've had several, you know, spiritual fathers. I've even, you know, clung, clung to Pastor Steve when we got married because, you know, Knowing the ways of the Lord, I, I just didn't have the love of a father. I didn't know the love of a father. And so, like, just knowing and digging into the word of God and, and learning what the word of God says about me, who I am, because I didn't have that where, where the father spoken to me what my God-given identity is. Um, so I didn't have that constant faithful man to show me the example, right? So I've had men along the way, and I'm grateful for each one of them because, you know what, God does not waste anything. Each one of my father figures, they may not have been the, the best example, but you know what? They taught me something, and I'm grateful for each one of them, and I honor each one of them to this day. God created us, and he knows everything about us. He knows what we're doing now. He knows what we did in the past, and he knows what our future holds. He knows what's best for us, and he protects us from harm coming our way. God loves us so much that he sent his one and only son to sacrifice for us. He was the ultimate sacrifice. That's how much he loves us. That's how much our father loves us. So if you're here today and you didn't have a good father figure in your, as an example in your life, look to God as your father figure. He wants to talk. He wants that walking, talking relationship with you. He wants to be your father. He wants to show you that he loves you. He's there for you no matter what. Amen. God demonstrates how to be a good father to our children. He's our perfect example. Just like I said, fathers, you know, they should go to the word of God. They should go to God to see what the example is for them to carry out. Amen? For those fathers out there doing their best, keep trying, keep pushing. Keep leaning on God to allow you, to, sh to allow him to show you the way. He will not fail you. For those of you who have fathers that didn't know the Lord, continue to intercede in prayer for them. Keep planting the seeds and let God water it because he's faithful to do what he said he'll do. So I hope today that hearing some of these fathers in the Bible, will, uh, they have expi inspired you guys and they encourage you to stay on the right path. Like I said, men, it's okay if you fail. So I guess the encouragement today is, is that, you know, you guys carry a huge, huge load. You guys carry a lot that even people don't even see. And maybe, you know, even me personally, as I was even doing my research, I'm like, wow, like, you know, I probably, I have to repent. I should have probably been at the altar. Like I, you know, sometimes we get ungrateful. Sometimes we expect and we, we think, okay, well, no, you're supposed to do this. You're supposed to do this, you know? But the thing is, is that they do carry so much. The men carry so much. Not only that, but if you look at it in a spiritual aspect, what do you think the spiritual battle that they're fighting? So not only do they have the natural realm, but they also have the spiritual realm of their, their fighting. 
they're fighting. Amen. So men, be encouraged today that fatherhood is not easy. It's not. You're needed in the family unit. So whether you're a father today, you're a stepfather today, a single father, a spiritual father, you are needed. You hold value in the eyes of your wives and your children. Fathers, I pray that today as you walk out of here, you know how valuable you are, how needed you are, how loved you are, and how impactful you are to those around you. Amen. Amen. So today, I just want to say to each person in here, I pray that, you know, what I, what I did say today, that it touches somebody's heart. Like I said, Father's Day sometimes is, is hard, like I, like I shared. It's not always been easy for me on Father's Day. And, you know, I think sometimes we have to just look and be grateful. The Lord says to give praise anyways, right? So, like I said, I may not have had the good example, but I was taught and I'm grateful because I could have been in foster care. I could have. I could have. I mean, things could have, I mean, the situation could have been so much worse than what it was. So I'm grateful. But men today, I just want you to take away today that you are valued. You are loved. You're needed in the family unit. I think that sometimes, you know, in the culture that we live in today that, you know, the men are now like, you know, oh, you're not important. Like, we don't need, we don't need you. But you, you are needed. You're needed. We need that strong man in the house to carry us. Amen. So if you are here today and you're struggling in any way, I want today to be an encouraging day for you guys. I want you guys to be able to come in and receive from the Father, from our Heavenly Father, the one that gives you all things, the one wherever you're lacking, He can give you all. Anything that you're lacking, he can give to you. So if you would, the prayer team, if you could come, if anybody in this place today, a father especially, if you need encouraged today, if you need encouraged to to move along and maybe you're just like, okay, God, I, I just need direction today. I need direction on how to lead my family, how to be a better father. Or maybe you're in here and your father is no longer with you and today is hard for you. And I I understand that. So maybe if anybody in this place needs prayer, the altars are open. Amen. But I want to say happy Father's Day to you guys. We love you. Don't go anywhere because we're going to be giving a gift out. But I'm going to pray real quick. So dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you today. Father, I thank you for being the Heavenly Father. I thank you, Lord, that you are here no matter what, Lord God, no matter what comes our way, Lord God. Father, I pray that you would encourage the men today, Lord God, to stand up and continue to fight, Lord God, that they would come to you, Lord. They would draw from you, Lord God. Draw from your well, Lord that they might be able to reproduce what you were giving them, Lord God. Father, I pray, Lord God, that you would encourage them today, Lord God, that they can continue to push through even when they fail, Lord God, that you would pick them up from the pit, oh God, and that you would carry them, Lord, that you would carry them through, God. No matter what comes their way, Lord God, I pray, Lord, that you would give them that strong foundation, Lord God, that they would build their, their life on you, God, that you would begin to be their lifeline, Lord God. Father, I thank you for our heavenly Father. I thank you for all the fathers in this place today, Lord God, and I pray, God, for a special blessing upon them and that you would just encourage them today, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen.